G'day and welcome to Redriven. Now, if the world of cars was the Academy Awards, surely the Audi S5 would take out the best supporting role in a medium-sized premium coupe category. Why the supporting role? Well, see, the somewhat introverted S5 is commonly forgotten due to its far more extroverted RS5 sibling. But we feel like the S5 deserves far more attention. Which is interesting because short of the single turbo setup in this versus the twin turbo in the RS5 and the RS5's kind of pumped bodywork and a few other minor details, the S5 is incredibly closely related to the RS5. Plus, it's far more affordable. Hence why we feel this thing needs far more attention. But even though when these are new, they are superb. That, that goes without saying. What about when they're not new? What about when they're like this one that's quite a few years old and have many thousands of kilometers on them? What goes wrong? Are they reliable? What do they like to live with every day? What do they cost to own and operate? And most importantly, should you buy one? Let's find out. Now, before we get deep into the S5, I should mention that this generation S4 is incredibly closely related to this. Basically, the S4 is this, but in a sedan or a wagon, or if we're going to go into Audi speak, it's a saloon or an Avant. But if you are in the market for an S4, hopefully this video will help you out as well. Now, this generation of S4 and S5 is called the B9, and it's been with us since around about 2016 or 2017, depending on variant and where you're watching this from. Actually, speaking of where you're watching this from, in this video, we're gonna be focusing on the Australian variants of the S5, but if you're not from Australia, don't worry, don't freak out, because everything we're gonna be going over should relate to S4s and S5s in your local market. Now, here are some fun facts about this generation of S4 and S5. These are actually built on the Volkswagen Group's MLB Evo platform, which is also the base platform for the Audi Q5 and therefore the SQ5, as well as the Volkswagen Touareg, the Bentley Bentayga, the Porsche Cayenne and even the Lamborghini Urus. And then there's the engine. Not only is the 3 liter turbocharged V6 the exact same engine as fitted to the SQ5, this engine is also in the Volkswagen Touareg again, the Porsche Panamera and Cayenne and a host of other Audis including the Q8. As we mentioned earlier, in S4 guys, this generation is available in saloon and avant form. But even in S5 trim, there is the option of this, the two-door coupe, a two-door convertible, or as a sportback. Also, the S4 and the S5 are made in Germany, unlike the SQ5, which is made in Mexico. And the link to the SQ5 review video is just up there. Now, look, we'd love to go over every graphic detail of the S5, but that would just take far too long. But we have gathered all that information, and we've put it in our handy redriven cheat sheets. Our cheat sheets are invaluable as they provide a full breakdown of the car's model range, its common problems, what you need to look out for before handing over your hard-earned cash, how much of that cash you should be handing over, and so much more. Check it out at redriven.com or in the link below. Now guys, if you already own an S4 or an S5, or you're like an S4 or an S5 expert, and you've noticed that we've missed something in this video, please let us know in the comments. Like, we're, we're doing our best to cover everything we can, but we generally find it's those that own these cars that are the true experts. So yeah, if we've missed something, let us know. So, does it look good? abso bloody lootly. Look, I know looks are supposed to be subjective, but come on. If you don't think this looks good, there's something incredibly wrong with you. Yes, the RS pumped arches make it look a little bit more muscular, but even in S5 trim, stunning looking car. Now, the reason this thing looks so good is because this is just basically a mild evolution of the B8.5, which in itself was a mild evolution of the B8, meaning that Audi got it right from the start. The fundamental design of this thing was great right from the beginning. And the reason it looks so good from the start is because Walter De Silva designed the first one, and he also designed the Audi R8. Walter can, can draw a car. However, there are a few little issues and problems that can arise, but we'll get to those soon. Okay, so how's the interior? Well, look, it's typical Audi. Design-wise, absolutely spot on. Even the materials they use are just beautiful. Like, you've got Alcantara here, you've got a great level of squidge up here. I love the carbon fiber trim. All the metal bits, they all feel nice and premium, cold to touch. Even the way the buttons work and feel, just spot on, beautiful. Even the seating position and the comfort of these seats, like these are the S Sport seats, but they're not you know, too race car, they're still super comfy on a long trip, but supportive when you're going through some corners. Driving position, spot on, heaps of adjustability with the steering wheel, bloody brilliant. Now look, obviously this car isn't that old and it only has a bit under 30,000 kilometers on it. So wear and tear wise, it's not an old car, but wear and tear, 
so far so good. Like the steering wheel is getting a little bit, like a little bit shiny, but not bad at all. Even the leather on the center console here is beautiful to touch. I feel like it's almost softened up a bit. If you've got, you know, baby smooth forearm skin like I do, rubbing it against that is almost quite soothing. Even like the weight of like any of the rotary controllers here and here, like even the weight and tactility just feels spot on. And look, I know I've said this a million times before, but thank you Audi for having actual buttons rather than just a touch screen. In a car like this, having actual tactile, tactile, tactile buttons to press makes such a difference. Maybe I'm just getting old, but I love buttons. Now I'm 71.88 Zoll tall. This is my driving position. And look, I know it might look like I'm kind of cramped in here, but it's actually, it's not too bad for a two-door coupe because this is based basically on an S4 and even the S5 Sportback has rear doors. Feet room's a little cramped. Legs are okay as long as you're willing to spread them a little bit. It does feel a little bit claustrophobic because the windows are quite small and my head's kind of banging against the roof. But for what this is, it's pretty good. As far as wear and tear goes back here, look, these back seats don't get much use at all. So everything feels honestly pretty brand new. It even kind of still smells a bit new. However, even though this particular S5 is fantastic inside, these things can suffer from a few interior gremlins, but we'll cover those shortly. How's the tech? Well, it is brilliant and there is heaps of it. So much so that if we were to go through it all in this video, it would take hours. Hence why it's all listed on our cheat sheets on redriven.com. But to give you a quick overview, here's me rapidly doing a voiceover. The Audi S5 comes with Audi's 12.3 inch virtual cockpit with 8.3 inch dash top infotainment system with MMI touch rotary dial controller which features plenty of goodies like Google Maps display, Bluetooth phone and audio streaming, dual USB ports, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and Audi Connect mobile internet capabilities. Audi also offered a range of different options like the Technic package which includes a head-up display, a matrix LED headlights and a Bang & Olufsen sound system. So is it practical? Well, in terms of boot space, yes, this actually has a bigger boot than the equivalently sized BMW and Mercedes coupes. And there's nets and tie down points and little hooks to hang your shopping from everywhere. Excellent. Oh, and also you can fold the, fold the seats down for even more space, which you can do with these. Actually, you know what? With the seats down and like a pillow, you could, you could genuinely sleep back here. This could be used for camping. There's also extra storage under here as well. Okay, practicality in the back seat. You've got a spot for your phone or just stuff here. You've got a 12 volt power outlet, your own air conditioning controls, air vents and seated heats in the back. That's pretty cool. You've got some nets on the backs of the seats here. It even has cup holders. You've got pockets in the side of the car here, but the problem is once you've got your leg in there, the chance of getting anything out of that pocket is slim to none. You've got this pull down armrest here with storage underneath and like Transformers inspired cup holders. They just kind of like open and change and morph, which is kind of cool. Also, if you've abducted somebody and you just want to make sure that they're okay in the boot, you can access the boot just like that. Hello. Brilliant. And practicality up front, you've got some pretty decent sized door bins. There's a hidey storage hole here, which is massive. There's a spot for your cigar up here, a couple of cup holders here, perfect size spot for the key just here. Great spot for your phone there. Spots for Eclipse mints just there. Extra storage here. Oh, and a excellent size glove box. So what goes wrong with these things? Well, let's start with the exterior. Now, in terms of the exterior, it is pretty much so far so good for these things. Although there are a couple of reports that the parking sensors can kind of glitch out. The drama with that is that when one goes, it kind of takes the whole lot with them. Again, not a common problem, and it should have been you know, sorted under warranty, but if you're looking at one of these, just check it out in case. Also in the Sportback version of these, there are reports that the rear window mechanism can be a little bit overly sensitive in terms of its safety. It's got a, basically a safety system integrated into it so it doesn't like guillotine your fingers or your arms off when the window goes up. And apparently in the early models, it's a bit too sensitive, so sort of struggles to get up. Although that should have been covered under warranty and it's not exactly a common issue. Next up, we have the windscreen. There's a whole bunch of sensors and cameras integrated into the windscreen. The problem is if you crack one of these, you have to get either a genuine Audi part or an Audi approved windscreen because we know of reports where if people get like cheap, dodgy windscreens, it plays havoc with these cameras and sensors and that's no fun for anyone. Okay, as far as interior issues and problems, look, there's, there's not many and they're not that common. There are some reports that the Audi virtual cockpit and the infotainment system on early versions of these can get a bit flickery and glitchy, although that should have been covered under warranty. 
However, there are quite a few reports that there's some rattles and squeaks and even crackles coming from this, mainly the stereo, mainly the speakers. The problem seems to be the adhesive that holds the speakers in place runs out of stickiness and the speakers can rattle and buzz. It doesn't happen in the optional Bang & Olufsen sound system cars, but if you are buying one of these, make sure you crank the volume and listen for any like annoying or horrible sounds like country music. Now in terms of mechanical issues with these, look, I'm not a mechanic, I'm not qualified to answer such a question, but Jim is. Now, statistically, as a brand, Audi ranks somewhere about below the middle in terms of dependability. And after reaching out to a few Audi specialist techs and spare parts people, their feedback lined up with what we see in the workshop, which is pretty much that the S5 is one of the more reliable late model Audis. They do wear out brakes pretty quickly and they seem to follow in the footsteps of some of their Audi relatives and they have a few water pump and thermostat issues. Other than that, we don't see much. I guess time will tell. Keep in mind, they're a high performance luxury car full of tech and if they're out of warranty, when something goes wrong, it will be expensive. Like everything Euro, keeping the services up to date is a must. Audi recommends services every 15,000 Ks, but if you're given it the beans and you want it to last, we'd recommend servicing every 10,000 Ks. Is it safe? My God, yes, it is safe. But how safe, I assume you've asked? Well, here's me doing another rapid voiceover listing the safety equipment. Ah, oh, thanks, mate. Safety kit on the S5 includes a 360 degree camera, parking sensors all around, high speed autonomous emergency braking, driver drowsiness monitoring, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, exit warning systems, six airbags, adaptive cruise control, turn assist, distance warnings, predictive efficiency assist which monitors GPS data and adjusts the engine for hills and corners, high beam assist and it has the maximum five star end cap safety rating. See, told you so, very safe. So what's this thing like to drive? Well look, I'm gonna come clean about something. This S5, isn't exactly standard. So this S5 has been tuned by Race Chip Australia, so it's got 40 more kilowatts and 100 newton meters more than a standard S5, which is nearly as many kilowatts as an RS5, but more importantly, the same amount of torque as an RS5. And what does that do for the driving experience? Well, yeah, it's uh, bloody rapid. <laughs> Now look, granted, I haven't driven the B9 RS5, but I have had a fair bit of seat time in the B9 RS4, driving enthusiastically both on-road and on track. And to tell the difference between this and that car, they're pretty much line ball. This thing feels, yeah, nearly, nearly, if not exactly as brutal as that. It's incredible. However, there is an issue, and it's something I raised in our BMW M3 video. The link for that is just up there. Like, don't get me wrong, this is heaps of fun. This is loads of power, and all on a deserted country winding road, and it's awesome. But is this too much power for Australia? Like, in Germany, on an autobahn, or even in countries that don't have kind of our nanny state of authority, it would make sense. But here in Australia, I don't know. It's just, every time I get into this thing, I feel like I've got to decelerate or jump on the brakes, otherwise my license is gonna go up in flames. Now, how have a few years and many thousands of kilometers impacted the ride and handling? They haven't. This thing still rides beautifully. It absorbs bumps easily. It sits flat through corners. The different drive modes do make a difference and they do exactly what they say. Comfort is comfortable. On a freeway in comfort, it just cruises along, wafts along. And in dynamic mode, this thing is a weapon. I've got to do this again one more time. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that is quick. That got to 60 kilometers an hour really fast. Now, as far as noises and rattles go, the Eclipse Mints do make a hell of a racket when they're sliding around the center console. But more seriously, there is a little, there's a little rattle coming from the back. It feels like the C pillar. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It just, it's not bad. It's just a little bit annoying. But besides that, it feels as tight as a drum. There is a negative, and I'm gonna be super, super picky. The steering is that typical kind of Volkswagen, Audi, I'm dead inside steering feel, or lack of feel. It's obviously electronic, there's no real feel to it. In the lightest mode, it's almost too light. Um, and even in like dynamic, like it weights it up, but it, there's no real, there's no nuance to the steering. Look, I know that's all like car geno wanking bullshit really, but in a car that costs this much money that has this level of performance, I just wish like through here, yeah, like, it, geez, it, like it grips and turns, but it just, I want more communication. 
Look, overall, this thing around town is an absolute breeze. It's so comfortable out on the open road. It just soaks up kilometers so well. And then out on these winding country roads, it's a weapon. Yeah, steering could be better, but that's about the only negative. This thing, even after this many years and thousands of kilometers, superb driving experience. Pricing here in Australia kicks off from as little as $65,000 for say a 2017 S5 with nearly 100,000 kilometers on it in pretty good condition. And it tops out at around about $125,000 for a mint condition 2021 S5. Now look, $65,000 is a lot of money, let alone $125,000. But look at it this way. A 2017 RS5 is going to cost you about $110,000 and a 2021 version of these is going to be about $175,000. So here's the question for you. Is the RS5 version of this worth an extra $50,000 over one of these? Let us know in the comments. And for pricing in the US and the UK, here's a graphic. Audi have a claimed fuel consumption figure of anywhere between 8.8 .8 to 9.1 litres per 100 kilometres, which is never going to happen because on this test, we've done city driving, freeway driving, and some enthusiastic country driving. We're seeing figures closer to 10.2. Audi offer a, let's be honest, a pretty underwhelming three-year unlimited kilometre warranty on all S5s, although depending on where you're watching this from, that can be extended for a price. And servicing is recommended at every 12 months or 15,000 Ks. So, should you buy one? Look, let's do the negatives first. That was a butterfly. These things do depreciate in value quite enthusiastically. Actually, you're going to be looking at losing nearly $10,000 a year. The warranty is pretty bloody short, and if things do go wrong once it's out of warranty, being a premium branded European car that is loaded with complex technology, the cost of parts and labor can potentially be terrifying. And it takes a superhuman level of self-discipline to not plant that right foot at every opportunity. So chances are your license is going to be forever in a state of jeopardy. So look, if you're being logical, no, you should not buy one of these. But like, logic's kind of subjective, isn't it? So let's look at it this way. For what these ask for on the used market, they offer an immense amount of car for the money. And even with a mild tune, they'll very nearly match an RS5 in terms of performance for $50,000 less. And while they do exude comfort and class and sophistication, they can also be downright juvenile and savage when you want to let your hair down. Look, if you're in the financial position to absorb the depreciation and you've got some money set aside just in case something goes wrong with it, yes, 100% you should buy one of these. Actually, even if you're in the market for an RS4 or an RS5, get one of these things instead. Get it tuned like this one and spend the forty dollars or $50,000 you've saved on your legal fees for when you lose your license. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and hey, what did you think of the S5? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, can you please hit those like, subscribe, and bell icon buttons, and after the video, go and check us out on the socials. See you next time. What about when they're not new, like this, like when, when that was terrible. Go from the top of that, Jesus Christ. Okay, here we go. To the S4, this is basically, it, I wrote it down really well, and I can't remember every word of it. Uh, da -da -da. It's four of the same generation is near identical. This is eh. Here we go. Now this generation of S4 and S5 has Here we go, here we go. Meaning that Audi got the design right, right from the start. That was at the end. Oh, sorry. A5, A4 and A5. Sorry, that. Just delete that right now. Delete the whole thing, we'll start from scratch. However, there are a few issues and gremlins that can start from there. Here, here we go. However, there are a few common, no, no they're not. But let us know in those comments below. And after the video, go and check us out on the socials. Hit those likes, I've gone totally blank on, I only said it 4,000 times. Brilliant, and there is so much of it. So much in so that, whoa, that was weird. Okay, here we go. And a 2021 RS5 versus an S5 is gonna be around about, f 100 and, 100, f so close, 175,000, all right, here we go.